So let me show you how to perform the short time Fourier transform in MATLAB, especially using the time frequency toolbox that is freely available on the web. So just search for time frequency toolbox and I have given you the reference so you should be able to download. Assuming that you have downloaded and installed, the installation is fairly straightforward. Now and also you, that you have put the time frequency toolbox on your MATLAB path. The all the routines that are available in this time frequency toolbox are now at your disposal. There is also a very nice reference guide and tutorial associated with this time frequency toolbox that you should read up. So let me get now to the point here. The routine that we are going to use is the TFR STFT. TFR stands for short time uh, time frequency representation and STFT obviously stands for short time Fourier transform. It is good to look up the help on this routine so that you know the syntax and the arguments that you can supply. The mandate, mandatory argument is a signal itself. Typically it expects you to supply all the routines in time frequency toolbox, expects you to supply an analytic version of the signal that you are working with. Whereas if you are working with WaveLab, then the, there is no such requirement. So here the X is a signal that you are supposed to supply that is mandatory. The rest are all optional. For example, time instance is a second argument and the default values are given here. The number of frequency bins. A quick word on the number of frequency bins. Remember what you are doing in short time Fourier transform. You are slicing the signal. So let us say I am choosing 16 samples of a long signal. Then what I am doing is I am performing DFT of the 16 samples. And the DFT theory recall tells me that I need to at least compute the uh, DFT at 16 frequencies, but I can also compute at much higher number of frequencies. And the this is exactly the number of frequency bins that it is referring to at how many frequency bins you want to compute. If you compute at more than the uh, frequent number of frequencies more than the number of observations in the segment, you are just doing an interpolation you are not actually creating any new information. So the minimum value that you should supply here is the length of the window itself. But we will not touch it or even if we touch it, we will set it to the defaults. And the fourth argument is the smoothing window itself. So the default is that it uses a Hamming window. We have not discussed the different windows, but the Hamming window has a bell-like shape like the Gaussian one with a slight difference. And uh, you can generate the values of this window function using this routine called TFTB window. So the TFTB underscore window generates this window. There is also a window function in MATLAB which can generate the values of the window function. The requirement is that you supply a window function of odd length. Okay. So with this background, let us run the TFR STFT on two test signals. One is the impulse and the other is the sine wave. What I am going to do is generate the impulse here. So I have generated zeros and I have just had added a, a, a unity or in fact inserted a non-zero value at the 65th position. Just to make sure that I have generated the right signal, plot it so it looks like an impulse, perfect. Now what I do is I supply the analytical version, analytic version, analytical version, analytic version of the signal using the Hilbert routine in MATLAB and I supply the vector of time instance and I also say that I want to evaluate it. These are all the default values. I am just explicitly specifying them and I will leave the window function to the Hamming or because it is an impulse, I can say I am going to use a an rectangular window for example of very narrow width. So for this I supply a window function. Ideally I can give one sample window but let us not do that. I am giving a rectangular, I am slicing the signal with a rectangular window of width 3 samples. All right. So let me see what it actually gives me. Fine. So let me maximize the plot for you. Here is the impulse. Ideally, I should be plotting a stem plot. And here I have the spectrogram. In fact, we can improve this plot, the layout of this plot by choosing certain options here. I can change the layout 
I can actually uh, ask for the spectrum and I can ask for the linear scale. So, I have done that. Now, let us look at the plot. So, I have the signal on the top, the spectrum on the left. The spectrum makes sense because an impulse signal has all frequencies in it according to, according to Fourier and the spectrogram resolves this energy in the time frequency plane. It, is say, it says something is happening in this period. Of course, now look at the time spread of this energy or the spectrogram. It is wider than actual time spread of the signal itself. That is again because of the window function that I have chosen. And of course, it is showing all frequencies. You can have a color bar coming up showing you the values corresponding to these colors. Red actually corresponds to the maximum intensity and the blue corresponds to the weakest intensity. So, so, the color here essentially represents the magnitude of the short time Fourier transform. Now, what we can do is just for the sake of it, we can choose a wider window and ask what happens. I am going to use a rectangular window. I, could, I can use a Hamming window, but the question is the width of the window. Suppose I choose a window of width 33. Instead of 3, I have 33. Let us ask what I see. So, now you see what is happening, right? The spectrogram has lost the time feature of the signal miserably. I mean, in the sense, it is unable to localize in time because I have chosen a wide window. So, now slowly you are actually going to get the Fourier transform. If you choose a much wider window, the entire spectrogram is going to be filled with colors telling you that each time there are all frequencies present in the signal because that is how Fourier transform is viewing it. Notice that the spectrum is not shown here by default, but as I said, you could again bring it up. In fact, one of the things that you could do is you can say save options, right? So, and it says option saved so that in future plots of this TFR, STFT, the spectrum is going to come up, okay? And you can do many things. You can set the lower and upper frequency bounds and so on. So, there are some beautiful options here that you should explore. Let us quickly ask how things look like if I have a sine wave, right? I am going to generate a sine wave of discrete time frequency 0.1 and I am going to generate 128 observations of that. Once again, I invoke this. This time, I will use the same window that I have used for the uh, previous signal, the impulse and ask how things turn out to be. So, as you notice the spectrum now is shown by default because I have saved the options. This is exactly what uh, is an illustration of what we did earlier on the board with respect to the analysis of sine wave. The Fourier spectrum, although it shows uh, a kind of a white triangle, ideally it is a stem plot, which means a Fourier analysis correctly picks a sine wave. The short time Fourier transform, yes, does say that the sine wave exists throughout the analysis, uh, the period or the observation period, sorry but it is unable to tell you what is exactly the frequency present in the signal and this is what we say is a smearing of the energy of the signal. The true energy of the signal is actually truly localized at a single line at, a, at each time it is a single frequency. But if I pick any time interval and if I were to go by the spectrogram, I am led to believe that there are all this band of frequencies present in the signal which is not the case. So, you have some kind of misleading information here and that is because the energy of the signal and the window are scrambled. They are actually mixed up, jumbled up and that is why you have this situation. Of course, the maximum intensity is present here which is over a much shorter bandwidth, band of frequencies than what you see here. So, you can say that this energy of the signal is encased in the energy of the window itself. I can improve this by choosing a wider window and I leave that exercise to you. But the question is what happens if I have both sign and impulse and we will evaluate that uh, those kind of signals later on, particularly when we study the practical aspects on window length and window type and so on. This was just a preview and also to get you started on how uh, on the practical aspects of the short time Fourier transform, particularly the computational aspects. So, we will meet again in the next lecture. 
where we will talk about the theoretical properties of the short time Fourier transform. Thank you.